Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we are waiting for participants to join the meeting from the waiting room. So yes. we'll wait. Once everybody joins. Okay, so uh, we can get started. Uh, a few people are still uh, joining us, uh, so uh, we uh, hope that everybody will be able to join. Uh, hello, good morning, and uh, welcome to everyone to this webinar regarding the open call for proposals of funds for commodities. Uh, my name is Andrew. I am the director for strategy in the Common Fund, and here with me on behalf of the Common Fund, there is also Mr. Nikolaus Kromer, who is the Chief Operations Officer of the CFC. So together, we will uh, take a brief tour of the application process uh, for uh, the open call of the CFC. So once again, welcome. We will first do a presentation and we will try to leave some space towards the end of the discussion uh, to ask any questions that you may have uh, regarding the call. Uh, the plan is to be done in one hour, but we have a, a bit of uh, flexibility, just a little bit. So with that, I will proceed to a uh, technical note. So first, if the broadcast is interrupted for one reason, uh, we all depending on technology, please just log in again in a few minutes with the same credentials and the, the meeting will be accessible. Uh, second, it is a lot easier for us to monitor and respond to the questions that you type in the chat box. So do keep an eye on the chat box and uh, if you cannot get through on the audio, type your questions in the chat box. Because we have uh, a large, large meeting, 160 people present. I thank you for your engagement. Uh, to keep the noise level down in the virtual meeting room, please mute the sounds uh, unless you are intending to speak. And I take note that there is a hand up for Mr. or Mrs. Chepang Matthews uh, Ramas. Uh, would you, uh, Ra, Ra, Ramasankate, uh, would please take the floor? Uh, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Ramasankate, uh, please take the floor. Please. Uh, okay, I believe it may be misunderstanding. Then, uh, Rudy, uh, your hand is up. Please, sir, go ahead. Okay, so the hand is down. So I presume uh, 
I presume uh, there was no question that was just testing. Thank you very much. Uh, in that case, uh, we proceed first with the introduction of the Common Fund for Commodities. Uh, so uh, a few basic facts about the organization. It is an international financing institution uh, headquartered in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, we have a small secretariat in Amsterdam uh, set up in uh, 1989. And we have 101 member countries plus a number of international organizations as members of the CFC. Uh, Common Fund specializes in the commodity sector, uh, where we have uh, 30 years of successful experience, successful project experience, over 440 projects that we have financed worldwide in over 90 different countries. Total project cost uh, has reached almost 800 million US dollars, so quite a significant contribution over the and this all achieved uh, a very small secretariat. Uh, we are on the in Amsterdam, and for this reason, we do not maintain regional offices. So all our operations are managed uh, from our headquarters. I see the flag of, uh, of oh no, the flag is down. So, uh, I presume that this was the test. So we proceed uh, to the uh, why. Okay, I see the flag of uh, Kitafuna Wycliffe. Uh, please go ahead. Kitafuna Wycliffe. Hello. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Ugandan time. Yes, I good greet afternoon. you all. And I'm happy to be a part of this uh, platform. Um, my concern is one, I, I don't know if this is the right time to ask my question or mm -hmm. I could wait after your speech. I just have a, a, a concern that I wanted to raise and mm -hmm. beg for your permission, sir. Uh, please, sir, if you could keep it to one minute. Yeah, one minute will be enough. Well, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm from Uganda, and uh, my question is very simple. I wanted to know, given the seasons of the different crops that we plant in my country, in which is agriculture, some of the, some of the crops that we plant are perennial and some are annual. I wanted to know, does that have an effect in the program? Because some of the crops that we plant here, that we tend to plant in the project, they grow for over 18 months in order for the beneficiaries to be able to succeed. Does it affect the planning process? Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I see two more flags up. Uh, so in principle, it would be the question to address to Nicolas Crome. Uh, in an, uh, we, we will uh, get to the point of the uh, uh, project cycle of the CHC. And we have a certain project cycle and uh, the alignment of our project cycle the cropping season in different in different countries would be complicated, but by timing your proposal in advance of the project cycle, I presume the question the question could be addressed. So, uh, would I ask uh, to then keep the questions on the substance to the end of the presentation? We will try to run through it as fast as possible, and if you have a questions, then right now on the conduct, on the way the meeting goes, go ahead, otherwise we'll postpone it to the end of the meeting. If this is okay, then I will uh, proceed. If uh, uh, Mr. 
Odama Dennis, uh, if uh, if you still have a question on the on the conducts of the webinar. Yes, um, Dennis from Arua, West Nile, Uganda. Um, mm -hmm. Like uh, I could request you go, you take us through, and then we ask the questions afterwards. That will be okay. With the honor okay. with me. Yeah, thank you very much. That's much appreciated. So then, uh, let without further further uh, uh, hesitation. So uh, you have seen already the slide in front of you for a few moments. So uh, the CFC targets commodity value chain. The CFC targets commodity value chains because uh, over two billion core people worldwide depend on those commodity value chains for their livelihoods. So investment in commodity value chains represents a very effective way to contribute to global development and particular to resolving the poverty problems like uh, nutrition security, recovery from, uh, from uh, pandemic, uh, sustainable development, sustainable future. And uh, as it says here, we look for innovation and creativity. Uh, the CFC maintains it its <laughs> principles of additionality, partnership, and innovation. Uh, so we uh, look for uh, for any fresh ideas, and we are open to any uh, new partners. Um, the vision and mission of the CFC are on the. So we basically strive to contribute to poverty alleviation by strengthening the. Uh, contribution that commodity value chains make to the livelihoods of the poorest and most vulnerable producers of commodities. Uh, the CFC operates by financing projects. So we do not, for example, we do not give grants for education purposes. There are other organizations focus on that. We finance projects in the commodity sector and we invite those projects through the open call for proposals. So uh, twice a year, we publish the application form on the CFC website and on social media and on the global search engines. And by completing this application form, you can send in a request to be financed from the Common Fund communities. Uh, obviously, we're getting a lot of demands for our resources. We get, we're getting a lot of applications. Uh, in the most recent call for proposals, we received 200 uh, proposals, of which we can only finance the best uh, and a fraction of the best. Uh, we have a process for selecting the best and most suitable project proposals that eligible to receive financing from the CFC. On the screen, you see the of how this process works. So first step is internal screening by the CFC secretariat. Uh, every uh, proposal sent to the CFC will be read by one of the project manager, will be reviewed jointly with the chief operations officer, and a decision will be made whether the proposal is uh, appropriate to be uh, stands for consideration by the consultative committee of the CFC. <clears throat> the consultative committee of the CFC is a group of nine independent international experts from all, all, all the regions involved in the CFC who meet twice a year. <clears throat> and who go through all the projects received by the CFC. So twice a year, a group of nine experts will review the best project proposals sent to the CFC through the open call and will decide which of those proposals are suitable for consideration on technical grounds. Uh, after the meeting of the CFC, typically the consultative committee uh, not just gives a recommendation, but gives a recommendation with a number of questions to be answered by the project proponents. We will reach out to project proponents with those questions. And in the end, we will ask the proponents to agree with us on the term sheet for financing. 
and the <clears throat> and the conditions for the C for CFC financing. If this has all been agreed, then uh, we put the proposal in front of the executive board of the organization, and the executive board will make a final decision on whether the proposal is suitable for financing or not. So uh, this, is, in a nutshell, is the process. It takes us so uh, well. There's a calendar later, but it basically takes us about uh, from. On 15 September, the decision will be available on uh, 15 April or in middle of April 2020. So this whole process uh, takes us about six months. During the whole process, the CFC secretariat, the project manager, may have to reach out to verify any questions or to confirm any information contained in the call. <clears throat> So how I, I see the flag up uh, by uh, Mr. Solomon Omarinaya. Uh, is it on substance? If it's on the conduct of the meeting, then please go ahead, sir. If it's on, on the substance, if it's about projects, then I would ask you to wait until the end of the presentation. All right, good, good morning. Good morning, um, Solomon from Nigeria. I want to inquire about the uh, selection process of the uh, what you just discussed about. Uh, talking about the, the, the financing of the projects to alleviate poverty in, uh, uh, in, the, in the areas that are prone to poverty. I want to ask that, is it not uh, possible if I may suggest for the selection to be uh, what I mean by uh, trying to like being equitable as in irrespective of uh, maybe take for example we have like uh, uh, 100 countries that you want your finances to go all around and you you have maybe a application from like uh, uh, let's say 80 of it hello sir yes yes we we can hear you please go ahead so from like 80, will it not be possible for you to uh, allow the fund to go to all those regions instead of selecting maybe uh, the best so that it will be equitable? That's my question, sir. Uh, it, it is, it is uh, basically not possible for us to answer to a general question of what would happen if. So we work with the practical project proposals, and uh, this uh, this is where we have to focus simply to be able to deliver to to deliver uh, reasonable results to those project proposals that are suitable and well prepared. So we have to focus on practical project proposals. Unfortunately, uh, there is no way to answer to the uh, general question of of the kinds of what would happen if. We don't know. Okay, let's see what let's see what happens because uh, life can serve us challenges that are difficult to predict. We are discussing a theoretical challenge that uh, that uh, well we'll face the challenge when when we have it. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Nain Nathan Min. Uh, if uh, if you have a question about the conduct, please go ahead. Otherwise, I would ask you to hold the question to the session and the end. Uh, ne yes. Go ahead. Yes. Hello. Uh, Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Nato Main from Myanmar. I am the uh, chairman of the Myanmar Rata and Bamboo Association. Actually, I would like to know if the CFC uh, office is located in Myanmar or not. This is my first question. The second question is uh, we are the project based on the Myanmar chart or US dollar. This is my uh, second question because uh, nowadays 
our currency is very unstable. That's why I would like to know these two questions. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. I would uh, kindly ask to keep the specific question regarding uh, project and specific conditions to the end of the presentation. So because, because basically many of the questions will be answered in the course of the presentation. Uh, we have to look at the specific project proposal to be able to decide on the specific answers to the, uh, the questions that you raised. So substantive answers require us to see the details, to see the specifics. Uh, we, uh, as far as Bamboo and Rotan is concerned, it is uh, one of the commodities that where the CFC has uh, has uh, financed projects in the past. Well, uh, the CFC can can finance pretty yeah. much commodities of this kind. So thank you very much, and I would like, uh, like to to uh, to be able to proceed. Uh, Right, so uh, again, you have been watching the selection criteria for CFC uh, for projects eligibility to receive financing uh, on uh, uh, in front of you for a while. So, uh, I don't have to read them all. Uh, I want to emphasize that uh, it is important for us to be able to understand the proposal. So to understand the proposal, we need to have a communication form uh, clearly stating the assumptions and explain how the proposal leads to a financially sustainable business plan. So with that, if the proposal contains that, we will be able to give you the best answers to the substance of the proposal. So, uh, I see the hands up by Mr. Nate Min and by uh, Prince Ibe. Uh, Mr. Nate Min, I would kindly ask to uh, ask your question in the Q&A session. So we have, we leave time for uh, 200. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I, I... Uh, I, we do not hear you, Mr. Nate Min. Uh, I would kindly ask you to give space to all the participants to listen to the presentation, keeping the que que questions to the Q&A session. If that's okay, uh, if okay. That's... Hello, can you hear yeah. me now? Yeah, we can. Yes. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, I just uh, introduced myself. I am uh, Netomi from Yama. Uh, we are the Bamboo and Rattan Association chairman just now. Actually, I would like to know the, the, the project based on the local currency or foreign currency, because our now the currency is not uh, stable. That's just only this uh, question. Uh, yes, Mr. Nathan Min, it is the question is understood and we will respond to the question when we get to the end of the presentation. It depends on the specifics of the projects. Uh, most okay. countries... Okay. Most developing country members of the CFC have unstable local currency, so this is a common question, but we will get to this once we are through the presentation because it will be covered in the course of the presentation. So I see three more flags up. Uh, Prince uh, Ibe, uh, I would kindly ask to, to uh, only make the questions that are currently relevant to the conduct of the meeting. Please keep all the project questions to the Q&A session because we will be answering general questions in the course of the presentation. So uh, I would give uh, one minute to Prince Ibe. Please go ahead. Hello. Sir, we cannot hear you. Yeah, yeah, that is all my question. Thank you for your answer, because the currency, uh, we are now uh, thinking about the currency. Just now, I already understand. Thank you. It was nice Thank you. No, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So I will get on with the presentation.
Apologies that I will not be able to take more questions now because the participants in the chat box are asking to proceed with the presentation. Mr. Chair, maybe you could just allow me to speak briefly. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Mwaba Kasese Bota. I'm uh, president and founder of the Zambian Center for Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Sustainable Development. I raised my hand to simply raise the issue or in the, the manner we are proceeding with the presentation. Uh, we take cognizance of the fact that you have uh, a lot of competing priorities and you have taken time to speak to us. Sorry, so my, my issue is that maybe you don't take any more questions, whether technical or concerning uh, the, the, the presentations. We take all the questions at the end because we'll, we'll really be delayed if we go at this rate. Thank you very much for this comment. And we proceed with the presentation. We will not take uh, further questions until we reach the Q&A session. Um, I'm looking at processing like ah. So uh, then we're proceeding with the presentation and uh, let's uh, look at the calendar for the 21st proposal. So as I already mentioned, we will be collecting applications up to 15 September, 2022. Uh, starting 16 September, whatever we receive by end of business on the 15th September, then we will read all those project proposals completing the checklists to make sure that uh, we see that the project proposal meeting the criteria of the CFC. Up to the middle of November, we will be able to do that. And in December, we will prepare documents for the consultative committee. We must send the documents to the consultative committee one month before the meeting. So uh, in December, we send the documents and from the end of January up to 2nd February, the consultative committee will be meeting in Amsterdam to discuss those projects that have met the criteria and to make a recommendation to the executive board. After the meeting of the consultative committee, shortly after the meeting, we will communicate all the conclusions and recommendations to those project proposals that have been successful. And we will ask to answer any questions that uh, have been raised by the committee regarding the proposals. So up to, uh, it says to October 2023, but this is actually a mistake. Up to April 2023, we will, we will be expecting answers. And if we get all the answers in good time, then we will present the proposals recommended by the consultative committee or decision by the executive board. So shortly after the executive board in April 2023, we will make it known to those uh, applications that are successful that they have been approved for financing by the CFC. So from 15 September, if you do not make it up in September, don't worry because the that that simply means that the application will go in the next cycle and the next cycle then will conclude in October 2023. Now if the proposal was successful and uh, passed all the stages and was approved by the executive board, uh, we will start checking on the facts stated in the application. During the application stage, we will mostly rely on what it says in the, in, in, in the documents. After that, we will uh, conclude the legal documentation. We will uh, come, somebody will come from the CFC or on behalf of the CFC to cite due diligence for the project. We draft the contract and we sign the agreement. And finally, we will first financing. In principle, that we can disburse finance in 12 months after the executive board approval. Again, the approval typically conditional on a number of, uh, of uh, uh, questions to be answered. And uh, 
once we have all the questions answered, then we can sign the we expect it to take less than 12 months. If the proposal has not started, if the project has not started, if we cannot disburse within 24 months after approval, then the CFC can withdraw its financing under the sunset clause. <clears throat> so this uh, concludes the part concerning the general process of uh, project review uh, under the open call. So I'm now going to look a bit into the details of the application form. In principle, I presume that you can uh, download the application form and the relevant instructions from the CFC website. So I do not have to spend much time on this. A few uh, disclaimers that uh, the CFC does not charge any fees at the application stage. So. Uh, we do not endorse any consultants to prepare applications for the CFC. We do not charge anybody. We do not authorize anybody to act or charge fees on behalf of the CFC. Uh, we expect applications to contain uh, complete and accurate information. And because of the small size of the CFC secretariat and the high volume of applications that we receive, the CFC is forced to focus on communication only with successful applicants. We will respond to all questions sent to the general open call address, but we will not enter correspondence with the applications that have not been deemed successful. You can apply in the next call for proposals if you do not hear from us after, after the time of the executive board but we will generally not be able to explain why a certain application has not been successful because simply because of the limited resources and high volume of applications we have to focus our uh, attention our correspondence on the applications that are sufficiently well prepared to be financed by the cfc uh, do make a note on uh, the ex exclusion list the activities and projects that the CFC does not finance. This can be found on the CFC website. Uh, finally, if the application contains any information that you would like to be treated in confidence, please indicate this clearly on the application form and we will uh, treat this accordingly. Uh, finally, uh, open call at commonfund.org is the general address regarding all questions and the submission of applications. So uh, the first part of the application form is the background on the organization. We simply like to, to be sure of who is applying. So the registered name, who founded, where it's registered in which country, the, you know, the tax registration, what is the location, what are the target markets, and a brief summary of what the, uh, what the project will do. Now, a uh, request for financing. Uh, for all forms of financing, we will not uh, contribute more than 50%. Uh, the uh, frequently asked the question, and this is important, it is a very frequent question, does this or that count as co-financing? Firstly, in advance, we do not know. Secondly, we have to see it on the financial statement, be able to determine if this is eligible, uh, if this is eligible to count as co-financing. So at least 50% co-financing is required in CFC projects. Normal terms of financing three to five years, rates determined using a certain risk management framework of the CFC and equity financing at this stage is only reserved for impact investment funds or other impact investment funds. Uh, I would like uh, to pass the floor to my colleague, now to Ms. Roma, uh, regarding the details of the forms of financing that you can choose on the application form. Nicolas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. Uh, also for me, a very good day, wherever you are. My name is Nikolaus Komer. I'm the Chief Operations Officer. I'll take you to the next couple of slides. And uh, we are already at chapter two of the uh, project proposal that we would ask you to fill in. And we are at the forms of financing. Now, this is an overview 
of our concrete products that we have on offer. The first one is uh, a classic term loan, a classic product for CAPEX investments. If you want to improve or rehabilitate uh, uh, your palm oil mill, or you want to expand your cocoa plantation, or buy some processing equipment, this is the one to go for. As Andre has mentioned, the term is usually three to five years. Sometimes it's longer when we get application form for perennial crops or the like where it makes sense and it's justified, sometimes even with a grace period. Yeah, Always tailored. Yeah, So we always look at the specific case and we structure the loan so it fits best. The next on the line is trade finance, uh, and that is basically actually our most popular product. Yeah, it's uh, it, that goes from pure trade finance against shipment documents. Yeah, uh, um, uh, so we'll start to to provide finance when when the when the goods are in the plane or at the ship, but they, it can also extend up to the point where the company needs money because they have received a purchase order and they need to go out into the field, purchase raw material from the farmers, process it, pack it, ship it, and then only then receive uh, 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 the refund from a, a trader or, or a supermarket in, in Europe or, or the US. So that would then turn to be a little bit more working capital. The longer the cash conversion cycle of this financing structure is the more likely is that we ask for securities other than purchase orders yeah that can be pledges on inventory on on receivables or some some guarantees what we are uh, usually very fond of when we do trade finance uh, uh, structures is that we work with tripartite agreements and that the ultimate off taker that is the trader or the supermarket or whoever that is who ultimately buys the product enters into an agreement with you and us to say okay i'll pay the common fund directly the common fund takes the share plus interest and then um, transfers the out the the remaining amount of that invoice to the to the producer example uh, would be an, an avocado oil company in kenya that has to go out by the avocados process the avocados to avocado oil then put it onto a ship and then only about three, four months later, the Aldi market in somewhere in France is, is going to, to uh, send the funds. Or if you, uh, what we also have is uh, somebody that, that uh, produces mango puree, puree in, in, in West Africa. So he and she, they have to go out, buy the mangoes, process it, and, and then store it for a while until a certain amount has, has been accumulated. And only then will it be sent to Europe and payment will be made. The next one is uh, uh, an equity stake. As Andre, I think, already said, we have so far not invested into equity of single companies because it simply absorbs too much capacity for our small organization. What we occasionally do is that we invest equity in impact investing funds. Yeah, That if, if there is an impact investing fund that has an, an interesting proposition, we always listen. Yeah, But we enter with relatively small ticket sizes, up to a million or one and a half. The next one where only the headline is there is called development impact bonds. Now, I didn't write a lot there, but it is of interest to us. Now, what is meant with a development impact bond? An implementing partner is on the one side, that is an NGO or a private company that claims to produce a certain quantifiable amount of impact yeah, with the implementation of a technical assistance grant project. In our case, it should be related to agriculture, maybe smallholders, and, and something with the agri-value chain. On the other hand, you have a traditionally you have a sponsor, yeah, uh, that is willing to pay for the impact, but and here comes the innovative thing: only if and to the amount that this impact is delivered. Yeah. So what we do is that we offer to play the role of an entity that pre-finances the implementing partner. Um, to implement the project yeah, and to take the risk of non-performance that the implementing partner will not produce impact or not the amount of impact claimed. So if there's going to be a lot of impact, then the CFC takes an interest, we get our money back and we get a premium. And if there's not a lot of impact or less impact, then either we don't get money at all or we get less. Now, we believe that this model has a future because sponsors, yeah, uh, usually grant providers, do no longer have to pay out 
to an NGO or to a private company in advance against a claim. So only a claim that uh, that then of impact that then will be materialize or it will not. Yeah. So uh, that is what we are interested in. If you have things like that on offer, we would be very interested to listen carefully. Now there is a link in the online application with an example. If if this was a little bit confusing for you. Last one on the list is fast track. That's basically uh, everything that you see uh, above, but with a smaller ticket size, I think up to $300,000 that can be submitted under our fast track procedure. Also, there is a very, very limited uh, uh, amount of, of grant funding that the CFC in exceptional cases can provide with very small ticket size. But in recent years, the success rate of this ha has been Minimal. I have to do some expectation management here. That needs to be highly innovative, of strategic importance for the CFC, and with substantial additionality. Okay, Andre. If we move to the next slide, this is just a screenshot of uh, when you want to apply for a loan. On the left side, you tick what type it is. Then you say, okay, what's the amount? I want a, a brief and catchy use of funds the anticipated tenor, how long the term, how long you want that loan for. And on the right side, you put in, uh, in very brief words, what kind of collateral you could provide for that. And the next slide is the same thing for equity stake. And also that you can tick on the development impact bond there. Uh, note that, that we do this in exceptional cases and only in the maximum share of 49%. Next slide. Moving another screenshot for fast track. So you tick on fast track, say the amount and also the type of funding use of funds. Okay, now the next slide actually is the headlines and sub sublines of chapter three of the proposal, management and operations. Now, what do we want to know here? Under three one, management and ownership, yeah, self-explanatory. Who are the shareholders. We want to know who is who the ownership of it. Is there any ultimate beneficiary owner? The famous UBOs. Yeah. Is the company part of a holding or with sister companies? And what is the context? That's what we want to know. Also, is there a board? And if there is a board, who sits on the board and why? And then under three one, also management. Who are the key persons running the company? What do they bring? to the table, hopefully complementary skills, expertise. And if you have some CVs, you can add them to the proposal. That's usually very helpful. Under 3.2, we want to know what is your current business model. Now, that is where many proponents have difficulties because they, they are involved in their day-to-day -day business uh, all day. So, so they find it difficult to, difficult to explain the basics. Please expect that we know nothing about your company. So start with, I run or we run company X and we produce and process products uh, Y for export to X, Y, Z countries. Very simple. So we already have a frame. Yeah. Then we would like to know where do you source from? Yeah. What processing steps do you do? When have you been established? Where are you located? Yeah. Who are your target customers? What are your employees? How many employees? Sales, production volumes, capacity for production and processing, et cetera, et cetera. So the basics, yeah? The goal is, or please make it your goal, that we as the reader have a good high level understanding what you do, how you do it, and at what size level you do it. Again, in many proposals, we have difficulties to interpret the business case, yeah? And with whom we are dealing. Doesn't need to be long. Please be concise. And when you have quantitative figures, please use them. We move to the next slide. This is the next chapter, chapter four of the proposal market opportunity. Basically what is around you and your business and how do you fit in there? Under 4.1, we want to know in what market or in what industry you are positioned. Is it a competitive uh, industry with a lot of pressure? Are you providing differentiated products to an extent that you fill a niche? Do you compete on price or quality? Do you not compete at all because you have such a unique selling proposition for your product? Do you have more than one product? And, and what is your main uh, uh, revenue generator? These are the kind of things that we want to know. One other key information that we want to have here is how do you currently secure your supply? 
Is it from smallholders? Is it from spot market? Is it uh, with longer term contracts? Are you, are you even integrated backwards yeah, with your own farms? That all this is of great interest to us because usually there it is where the social impact lies. And ultimately with CFC funding, we would like to generate social impact. On the other side of the value chain, who is your main off-taker? Who are your main off-takers and how do you market? Yeah. How do you ship? What's your relationship with your off-takers? Do you know them for a long time or is it at arm's length? Yeah. Also, what are the barriers to entry into your market? Is it easy or difficult for competitors to, to step in? It's a, a very important thing for us to determine potential competition. Who are your main competitors? What are their names? And, and, and if you have some kind of size indication. Also here under 4.1, if you have any other interesting or relevant macro level information, please put it here. Yeah. Are there any legal issues, environmental issues, political tech issues? Yeah. Does, is the industry expecting a game changing technology? Is there a law on the horizon that, that prohibits exports? Uh, something like that. Please put it there. If we move to 4.2, that's key strengths of your business model. Here comes a chapter where we want you to express in a few sentences what makes you better than your competitors. Yeah, Where do you see your strength, be it in your staff, be it in that you're hyper-efficient in processing, that you have a unique product, price leadership, customer relations. We, we want to know. Under 4.3, same thing the other way around, weaknesses. We want to know. Yeah where you see your business's weakest point. Where do you see need to do better and try to work out any relationship to uh, 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 in, in a way that you can say, okay, I want to do better. And for that, I need CFC financing. That is something that, that we would like to see. Okay, next slide. That would be chapter number five, proposed operational model. Now that we have hopefully have an, an overview of your business. We want, now want to turn to the future, yeah? So what is it, yeah, based on what you have described in the previous chapter on how your business is right now? We want you to elaborate on what your plans are with CFC funding. How will your business look like after you have invested CFC money? Where will the effects be, yeah? What changes will take place? Will you go and vertically integrate? Yeah. Will you have a, a capacity, a production increase, a diversified product range? Will you expand in countries? Will you, uh, will you produce better quality? That is what we want to know. In the 5.2, we want to know how will your customer base change? Yeah. Will you attract new customers? Will you enter new markets with new products? Uh, or will you just deepen the market that you are currently in? Will there be any change in distribution channels yeah, from informal to formal markets? Will you differentiate or different export uh, uh, country, uh, will you export to different countries? Yeah, this is very important. One, country, one question that has already been asked and that's what we want to know, what currency will you be selling in? That is of paramount importance for us. Yeah, Will it be local currency? Will it be US dollar? Will it be any other currency? Five, three, supply. Yeah. We would like you to elaborate on the supply side. What is it that you require to operate also under the new conditions when you have expanded or whatever you have done with CFC funding? Yeah. How will you secure an assumed higher supply? Yeah. Will you diversify your sourcing? Will you engage with, engage with outgrowers? Will you import? Will you substitute? Is, is, uh, uh, is there any associated risk to it? Yeah. How will you structure your supply? Will you do spot uh, spot trade, arms length? Will you do long term contracts? Do you have an organized supply chain? How is the pricing? Yeah. Is it local supply or is it from the world market? That's what we want to know. Under five four, we would like to know about the changes in your production or processing processes. Yeah. The perspective one perspective. Do you add any additional value through adding? improving or whatever the processing steps. Yeah, will you become traceable? Will you become organic or any other certification that that's an example? Another aspect is what's going to change? Will you need more skilled staff? Yeah, are you engaging into a new processing technology where you need to be trained? Is there a risk of failure into the technology? Is it highly innovative? 
Do you have access to electricity yeah, or any other sources of stable income, or is there an issue with it? Under 5.5, five, innovation, yeah, we would like to know if you plan to apply any innovation alongside new, the new investments that you make. Yeah? Will you, for example, introduce a digital enterprise resource planning system? Yeah? Will you start to engage with blockchain? Will you become fully traceable? Will you convert into organic? Start with carbon certificate or renewable energy, or even very less or, or, or on, on a very low spectacular level, but still for us, this is an innovation. Will you be the first company that would be starting to grow peanuts and export them in your country yeah? or develop some kind of industry? Let me summarize before I hand over to Andre again for the development impact. Yeah. With all I have asked you, try to be as concise as possible and try to underline your information with quantitative figures wherever you have them. Yeah. For yields, production levels, staff numbers, and try to avoid what we call fogging. Yeah. And don't fall for data and information dumping uh, that, that you just provide us with all you have. Uh, that, that, that's not what we are looking for. We are fully aware that there's no business in this world that is perfect, yeah? So don't be afraid on self-highlighting your deficiencies of that business and the possible risks your business is exposed to, yeah? At the proposal stage, when we read your proposal, we need to get a clear high-level overview, yeah? And picture of your business to see if the business can be sustainable. Yeah, that is the key thing. Sustainability of the business is the basis for any sustainability of, of uh, a social impact, yeah, which then becomes sustainable impact. And that is what we are after. Yeah. So I think the next slide I'll hand you over back to Andre. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Nikolaus. And we are getting to the end of the application form. So uh, development impact, uh, it, is a, it is an important part. And uh, if projects does not, is not clear about its development impact, sustainable development impact, then the project will not be successful. Uh, in the first, first part, uh, so the, there are four parts to describing the development. And in the first part, please make a short summary how the project will deliver its impact. So creating new jobs, creating new income, it has to be sustained. It's not enough to simply say that we will provide financing to the farmers because this financing may not renew. So it has to be sustainable. It has to be demonstrably sustainable that it is achieved in the projects will be sustained after the completion of the projects. Uh, the CFT rates uh, in the second section, you need to uh, link the impact of the project to the sustainable development goals. There are five, uh, six now sustainable development goals that the CFC considers to be the core priorities, the ones you see on the screen. Uh, in addition, if you think your project concerns other sustainable development goals, please indicate that as well. There's a downloadable Excel spreadsheet that contains more details on how to uh, provide this information. In the next <clears throat> section, you need to provide the data you can have, the best data you can find. It is difficult to find, so it doesn't have to be perfect, just give it the best shot to demonstrate how the project is linked to the needs of the poor. So what's the poverty line in the target country? How is income distributed? Is the target region of the project more poor or more rich than the rest of the country? How does the project compare with the average GDP and average income figures for the country? Income data, gender involvement of any marginal groups like the unemployed uh, youth in the cities, uh, any, any other special vulnerable groups, uh, uh, what's the proportion of people below the poverty line that are involved in, in the project. So any to explain how the impact of the project will, can, will be contributing to the lives of the poor. 
The fourth section of the impact concerns the environmental and social uh, dimension of the projects. And for each project, we will be completing a uh, SEMS, a uh, social and environmental management tool, which basically makes sure that the projects are consistent and compliant with the labor rights, that the environment is not, is not uh, harmed by the project. And so there is more information on this in the downloadable Excel spreadsheets. At the application stage, you need to be aware that we will uh, apply this social and environmental management system to the project. And please indicate, uh, indicate any social and environmental management tools that you already have, because that will be a plus for the performance. There was a question in the chat box uh, regarding the impact measurements. Uh, we use the IRIS Plus system, and there is it's a huge system, but there is a suggestion on the IRIS Plus indicators in the spreadsheets uh, for, uh, for impact reporting. Please have a look. Uh, please pick IRIS Plus indicators suitable to the project, like the number of people, number of new jobs, uh, people employed, et cetera, uh, that uh, characterize the impact of the projects. So I'm uh, running quickly through this, uh, through this uh, because uh, it's uh, pushing. Uh, we are now at the financial performance, uh, Nicholas, and I don't know if we can make it uh, concise because this is all basically on the spreadsheets. Just need to open Excel and fill in the numbers and ask any questions that you may have there. So, Nicholas. Yeah. Uh, let me let me speed this up a, li a little bit. Yeah, it, it is alongside the, our narrative business case. Uh, uh, we would also like to let the numbers tell the story, uh, and we do that in in, in chapter seven. Um, in, in principle. Uh, and that we want will show uh, after this slide we, we show you the templates in, in of a balance sheet and a profit and loss account that we will ask you to put in the historic figures and financial projections yeah um, please note uh, we have to look uh, at these figures at a lot of proposals in a structured manner and and grasp the general notion of those uh, figures quickly and that is why it is pre-structured and that is why we kindly ask you not to amend the template rather try to make your figures fit into that structure, yeah, uh, um, please. And, and when you do that, uh, uh, please make sure that we have a true and fair view on your financials, yeah? It will save us a lot of work if we do not find out at a later stage when we check an audit report or other things that these figures do not match, yeah? W which will be analyzed anyhow at a later stage, yeah? So also as as, as, as a, a advice, we know that there is hardly any business yeah, that comes with a shiny super solid balance sheet and, and, and tons of cash and regular high net profits. So, so uh, um, it is okay if you put in figures which are not like that. Yeah? So under chapter 7.1 of the proposal, you have the opportunity to explain the figures why some of them might go up, down and whatever. Please use it so uh, it, it can be explained. Um, for the projections under 7.2, uh, yeah, please provide us with the main assumptions that you put for the projections. Yeah, if your project has a hockey stick growth curve, we need to know on what basis that you do that, and please inform on prices, volumes, uh, various products sold, and whatever, so we have an idea and and can check it for plausibility. Yeah, under 7.3, we want to know your existing finance providers and what type of funding you have received and and in the amount. And the amount and under seven uh, four, yeah, um, we would like to ask you the, the the main risks that you are facing and that you might face when you grow with CFC funding. Yeah, kindly be open, be transparent, be honest. There is no business in this world without any risk, and we know that anything related to agriculture is risky and can go wrong. So uh, whatever you write in there, uh, we can take it. Yeah. Uh, if you see the next slide, you see exactly that's that's a, a screenshot of, of the Excel sheet that you can download. Andre, if you can move to the next slide. Yeah, 
uh, there should be no surprises on the, the line items on the left side are very standard. And then you can see on, on the left, uh, historical current financial year, and then it goes over to, to the future, yeah. Uh, next slide shows the same thing for the balance sheet. Uh, also the line items, uh, uh, if you have any uh, education, basic education in, in, in finance, you see that there are no surprises in there. Uh, again, historical, current, and, and future. This is what we want. Okay, then we move to chapter eight. Yeah, and that actually wraps up already. Uh, on the left-hand side, of, of you can see what is required to be accompanying the proposal. Yeah, We want the audited financial statements for the latest three financial years. If you only have two and you have management accounts of the last year or whatever, send them and say, okay, the next year is going to come. The financial projections, as I just said, kindly submit. Yeah, Balance sheet, profit and loss account. Cash flow forecast is not required. It's not in there. It's something that, that we develop ourselves. Impact indicators and you put out company registration documents. We need to know that your company really exists. And further below, legal ownership chart Yeah, uh, uh, for the company or for the group. And if it's a bigger group, we would also like to have a group chart so we can orient ourselves. On the right side, that is not mandatory, but it is recommended if you have. If you have a business plan, by all means, send it. Yeah. Other charts, management, organizational charts, please send them. Key staff CVs, yeah, I've mentioned before. Articles of associations, please send. And if you have any environmental social impact assessment, also if it's a little bit older, please send it. If you have PowerPoint pitches or whatever of your company, you can also send. Yeah, it's always very helpful. Okay, the last two slides, I think, are again for you, Andre, and then we're through. Uh, thank you very much, Nicolas. So uh, the last two uh, points on the application form, uh, we need to have the key details about the organization where it's incorporated uh, since when uh, this this is the base again the basic KYC know your customer information. And we would like uh, each application form to conclude with the confirmation. So you have to check all the boxes and confirm that all the information is true and uh, plate a kind of electronic or otherwise signature on the application form. Uh, please again, tell us if any of the documents you're supplying sensitive commercial uh, information. So we, we need to know if any information is to be treated in confidence. So uh, that concludes the application form. Uh, you are welcome uh, to uh, write to us. Okay, so you know, I already see quite a number of messages in the chat box. So I think I will proceed straight to those first, and then we'll take a few more questions uh, from the floor. So uh, speaking about, so the most common question in the chat box, can we have the recording of this presentation? Yes, the uh, recording will be posted on the CFC website. We will send to the presentation on the CFC website to all registered participants all the web of the webinar. I see there's a number of email addresses in the chat box. I believe my colleagues uh, will make those. Also, when you came to the meeting, you were uh, providing your email addresses. Uh, there's a number of uh, proposals for collaboration, and uh, this is not the subject of this webinar. We talk about uh, making proposals to the CFC. So if you believe your organization has something to offer to the CFC, then please write to the general CFC address on the website. And this is the subject of, uh, of a different kind of discussion. So I will not uh, dwell on those questions. Uh, there is a number of uh, there is a number of uh, questions concerning: Is this proposal eligible, or is that is that eligible? Uh, we will not be able to answer those questions uh, because we need to have details of the proposal uh, in the application form to be able to consider it. In the interest of uh, being fair to all project proponents. We ask all proposals to complete the application form so we can consider all proposals on an equal basis. Uh, one question that we can answer in this regard uh, concerning commodities 
as I answered in the beginning of the presentation. For example, bamboo and rattan are certainly eligible. Uh, there is a question about uh, copper in the chat box. Uh, copper, in principle, is eligible. It depends on the detail of the proposal. If, for example, we, we are aware that uh, artisanal and small scale mining is a very significant uh, part of, uh, of the economy in some African countries. So again, this would be eligible. The rest is down to the details of the proposals. Uh, uh, the deadline for the propositions is 15 September. Uh, amounts is up to one and a half in some cases. Million. We are working to increase it, but we're not there yet. 50% uh, contribution calculated in fast track project proposals in exactly the same way as in regular project proposals. We need to be able to identify the co-financing on the balance, on the financial projections of the project. If we cannot see co-financing on financial projections, then it's not eligible. So again, questions about uh, uh, collaboration and question uh the video so uh cotton is also eligible commodity basically uh definitely not eligible are the the uh and the oil and gas biogas is eligible as byproducts of another commodity value chain but oil and gas and coal instruction is not eligible uh, alcohol and tobacco are generally not eligible. Have a look at the exclusion list. Everything else is uh, suitable to be considered by the CFC. Uh, South Sudan is not a member country of the CFC at this stage. So uh, have a look at the list of member countries of the CFC on the CFC website. Uh, there's a question about three-year financial statements. Uh, that that does that mean that the projects are at least two or three years old? Uh, projects, yes, but we also recognize if a person who has decades of experience in the field and is just starting a new operation, we would also look at that. Uh, right. So I believe I need to. Uh, open the floor for comments because uh, the rest of it is, uh, can we provide revenue statements to replace audited parts of financial uh, historicals for individual and registered company in Europe? Uh, probably, yes, uh, that is, uh, that's, uh, we will have to see it, but in the audited reports are needed if the company has been in existence for, for some years. So uh, is green energy eligible for funding? Uh, depends on the commodity value chain. If it's part of the commodity value chain, then uh, byproducts and green energy may be eligible for funding. Biogas production eligible. Uh, Newly started business, Nikolaus, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that uh, that uh, we do not finance startup companies. Startup companies need to demonstrate that they have substance behind it to be eligible for financing. Otherwise, we do not have a restriction. So NGO, any uh, the only restriction is that an organization submitting a proposal through the open call needs to have a legal personality because they will have to sign legal documents. So if an NGO, for example, has a legal personality, then it can certainly submit a proposal. Uh, there are uh, more questions about, for example, uh, eligibility of ICT projects. Uh, it, it depends on the connection with the commodity value chains. The CFC invests in the capacity of commodity value chains to generate sustainable impacts 
in the interest of the poor and vulnerable people in developing countries. If you believe you fit this criterion, then an ICT as a means of achieving impact may be eligible. So I'm going to uh, ask to uh, open the floor now for uh, questions spoken. So I see Mr. So Min, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Andrew and Nicolette for your their, their presentation and also the complete explanation about the, the proposal. But I have three questions. Uh, maybe you already had uh, one question already answered. The first question is there, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm from Myanmar, also that I'm working with the bamboo, the plantation, and also we have the private uh, company for the bamboo uh, nursery and also production. So we would like to know the, um, uh, the first question is bamboo, is, is the bamboo included in the commodity? And I yes. think you already answered the first. So and the second question is the bamboo is not included. Can uh, can we apply at the bamboo for the reforestation or also, also like the we are supporting the bamboo uh, seeding to the forestry like the agroforestry project something like this and the second question that and then we already informed by the uh, uh, Myanmar the the uh, commercial federation something like that that two 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 months ago so, but then if we apply individually right now, so is that a little bit cheaper? This is the second question. The third question is the, if the, we are interested to applying the fast track financing, is the, this is the, uh, you mentioned about the, the flexible financing and security condition. I, uh, I am not clear if the, if the proposal is clear for the, uh, for example, like the, we are not the, the uh, uh, not profitable company. So it, I mean, if, if the the financing is we have the clear the statement, it it will be non-refundable or something like that. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so bamboo is eligible in Prince. This is any organization is eligible regardless uh, of when it was formed, but it needs to have or at least people behind it to have a track record in the area where the projects uh, regarding the profitability of financial statements and other specific questions we will not be able to answer here because we need to see the application form we need to have the completed projections for finances so uh, you are eligible the proposal it sounds like it's eligible to apply but we cannot say if it will be successful because we have to see the application form thank you uh, so next uh Dennis. Yes, thanks to Alex and Colin, uh, Nicholas. Um, I just wanted to know some few things. Is Uganda eligible to apply? Yes. Then two, I'm not getting something about cassava and the maize production. And are these things eligible or else you are to write a proposal on them? And how, how much is allocated? Is it in euros or in US dollars? the currency and uh, how will you people know that we are having that and uh, those things uh, can, work, can work well and the period of production varies from region to region. For us, we are sometimes we are in dry season, sometimes we are in wet season and seasons can vary. Mm -hmm. So how can you help me, help me on that line? Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so we are very well aware of cassava. Uh, I personally have traveled to cassava producing region in the past cassava projects in, in specifically in Uganda. Uh, also maize, we have current projects on maize in Uganda. It is entirely eligible. The rest we have to see in the details of the, of the application form. The seasonality is also a well-known uh, issue. Uh, again, we can only say, please put the relevant date application form. Thank you. Uh, could I uh, ask uh, Mubarak Amode to take the floor? Yeah. Good morning, sir. Morning. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we Thank can. you for the opportunity. I was the one who asked about green energy and for startups. Actually, I have a couple of us, about nine of us, Nigerian university students, actually. 
and are working on how to use farm wastes in producing biogas on site for farms and for households as well too. So we're coming up with a design, but we need funding for publicity so people can actually get awareness about what we are, what we are bringing on and actually get to use the product. Uh, Did you get to Yes, we, we, we hear the question. I, I will only say that uh, we cannot answer if this will be successful because we don't know. We have to see the application form. Uh, Nicholas, I don't... It's, it's, uh, it's we are one... sure, actually, we are sure it's going to move because we have issues with uh, the production of methane gas actually here in Nigeria. People get to dispose the farm waste illegally, not the right way. And this is actually affecting the atmosphere. So we're working on how to harness this energy and use it so that we can actually help small, small farms. Actually, I work on a farmland where we can actually help them. Instead of buying charcoal in production for heat, for brooding, they can actually get to use the same waste gotten from the farm for their brooding house. And we are sure people are going to buy the idea, but we need funds because we're working on design already, the best kind of design to harness this energy and to use this, it's not actually going to be more expensive, but we need funds to actually start up a business. We're working on already registering the company with CAC in Nigeria as an enterprise, and we're hoping to do that this year. So I want to ask, how much year do we need as eligibility to get funds from CFC? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. And this is the question that we will not be able to answer here because uh, Simply the fact that you had to submit the details of your project proposal to us indicates that you need to put them down in the application form. That's what the open call for proposal is designed for. So please put this data in the application form and then we will be able to answer if it is suitable or not. We will not be able to answer your question in this. So we'll include, we would include all in the business plan. Please, uh, please do. I'll certainly well aware of the byproducts of green energy in many commodity value chains. We have financed those projects in the past, so we know how to deal with them. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Hello, Mr. Uh, can I ask uh, uh, Mapaki in Antonietta? I'm, I'm going in the order of the hands. So, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mapaki Antonietta Lelonia. Please, madam, go ahead. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, okay, you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's Lithuania and not Lithuania. You can say just Antonieta is fine. Um, my question. Uh, it's only based on the seed funding. The CFC provides seed funding because uh, we actually have a company here. Uh, we, are, um, we are more than one or more than two. We have formed a company and we are in the process of incorporating it here. And so our main obstacle is getting finance. It's a recycling company. So I'd like to know if it is eligible for, for for this CFC funding and if you are uh, you, you provide seed funding for the new startups is a new startup change just because it, we, we like we are at a startup point we have not yet started because the machinery required cost uh, more money and that's our main obstacle so we would like to to venture into plastic recycling and produce something out of those plastics here. Uh, there is not even a single company here which has uh, ventured into that industry and produced something out of plastics, but only that they export the, the plastic bottles outside of this country to Republic of South Africa. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Antoniata. I'm afraid that the startup company and seed company would be out of reach for the CFC because we do we simply do not have a mandate for that from our member countries. I believe there are other 
uh, investment funds available to take up the startups. So uh, thank you for that. I see a number of uh, connected questions in the chat box. Uh, so Malawi eligible? Yes. Sesame value chain eligible? Yes. Aquaculture uh, suitable. We had projects on aquaculture. Uh, hibiscus tea, hibiscus flower, all, also eligible. Uh, how many years does the enterprise need to need to exist to be eligible? In principle, we ask for three years of audited financial statements. Uh, in uh, cases where it's clearly a continuation of an early enterprise, we will count the years in business of the people behind it as also reason to consider this uh, suitable for financing. So uh, can I ask now uh, Binia Mulat to take the floor? Sir, please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. My name is Binia Mulat. It's from Ethiopia. Do you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you here. Uh, yeah, I would like to say uh, one question, which is uh, uh, we are seed producers, hybrid maize seed producers, basic seed producers, and uh, pre-basic. We produce pre-basic, basic, and certified seed, if you understand me. So uh, my question is, is that legible, uh, our company uh, here in Ethiopia, and which we are producing is uh, maize, uh, wheat, uh, malt barley, and fava bean. Is that uh, is that we are eligible for this? Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask uh, my colleague Nikolaos, who has uh, quite a background on Ethiopia, could I ask Nikolaos to respond? Yeah, thank you very much. In principle, that is that is all eligible. You have to uh, take into account, however, that, that we will or, or our our loans are being extended either in euros or US dollars. And uh, as far as our experience is with Ethiopia, there is uh, the the, the uh, import and export of foreign exchange is quite an issue. So uh, before we would engage with this, we would need to be sure that th this can all work out uh, within a manageable level of administrative uh, uh, headache. Okay. okay. We, so uh, we, we are certified seed producers, which is uh, from 12 uh, companies in Ethiopia. I'm one from, uh, from the 12, I'm one, one of them. I don't know uh, how, how, how about, how could I say? I'm Seed oh, producer uh, company, which is re registered in the Ethiopia. That's all fine, and and, and I, I clearly understand it. I, I know what your business is. Uh, what I have just described to you is just a very practical uh, obstacle that 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 we encounter because it is not very difficult to extend a a foreign exchange loan mm -hmm. into Ethiopia, and that we need we would or you would need to sort of make clear for yourself and, and make a proposition on how we could solve that in in yeah. the proposal. Yeah. It, it needs to be in, in the application form uh, because uh, we all know that Ethiopian Central Bank imposes strict conditions on borrowing and especially repaying in foreign currency. So in the application form, you need to indicate how you go going to address, how you go going to get the relevant licenses from the Central Bank of Ethiopia. So as, as far as the substance of the project is concerned, it is all uh, doable, but we know that not only Ethiopia, a number of countries have constraints by the central bank, uh, which amounts in substance to the fact that you must be able to export to have access to foreign currency. So uh, that uh, needs to be shown on the application form. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll contact you inside. Thank you. Uh, can I ask uh, for Rudy Flores to take the floor? Uh, please go ahead, sir. Yes, good morning, sir. Uh, this is Mr. Rudy. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, I am... I am I, 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 
uh, in the Philippines country. Chairman <laughs> of Bantay Kabuhayan Philippines Livelihood Association Incorporated, known as one of the NGO that my organization is uh, we have starting from year 2001 up to the present, but uh, my my member is uh, 6,210 uh, alone in Mindanao, Philippines, except in Visayas and Luzon. So, but we are we are sleepless night and day due to the problem that my member and 6,000 in Mindanao and except of the Luzon, we have our 1.8 million members uh, alone uh, of the Philippines, but all uh, all be, all be uh, under uh, uh, indigenous family, a poorest family, uh, jobless, homeless and landless. And I, I cannot post through as a, as a chairman of the organization to, to assess their livelihood system. That's why I am asking in a foreign uh, friends like you, uh, a, corp, uh, a group of uh, CFC and behalf of your staff there, that I am very thank you uh, everyone that my, my application will be recognized you. And I hope that this application will be prosper uh, after our submission of the feasibility study uh, regarding of our humanitarian projects and in the part of sustainable develop, development by um, uh, improving the uh, agricultural products such as uh, corn par farm and otherwise the cow, uh, cow patining that the members of Mindanao team will be benefited. Now, if you allow me that this uh, application uh, to assist my members, uh, poorest members in the Philippines, we are very thank you to all your staff and CFC. And we have no more question. All your explanation that I get, all of your explanation, and I I wait and I follow all of this. And then um, I submit my feasibility study um, within the month of September, sir. That's all, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, we, uh, we, we take notes. Uh, we, we have a number of projects in, in the Philippines as well. We have a strong connection uh, to the Philippines. Uh, so we, we will see uh, the project proposal when the application form arrives. Thank you very much. Uh, can I give the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Stephen Opetum? Please go ahead, sir. Unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Stephen Opeitu from Uganda. I just want to find out if the Common Fund for Commodities can consider a combination of debt and equity financing. Uh, okay. Uh, Nikolaus, can you reply to that? Uh, yeah, it is with with in our mandate and, and we do have the tools for it, it, it would need to be a, a, a very special case though, uh, uh, which on a high le a level and formally yes, but it, it would need to be special. That's my answer, I can give you to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, can I ask uh, Nikolaus Haddock uh, to take the floor? I'm uh, I'm requesting Nicholas Haddock to unmute and take the floor. Hello, can you can you hear me now? That's perfectly. Great, great, great. So, yeah, my name is Nicholas Haddock. I'm speaking from London. I'm uh, I'm asking a question about a business in Nigeria. We have a, a a proven business model that we 
established in, in Ghana, and we want to take it to uh, Nigeria. It's based on proven technology. Uh, it's a disruptive impact business in palm oil, in the, in the, in the palm oil industry. And I'm wondering if uh, the fact, you know, with um, disruption caused by the pandemic and setting up a proven business in a new country, whether that will, with, with proven technology, whether that precludes us from uh, coming to you for, for uh, part of our funding. <laughs> Maybe I can I can chip in here uh, if I hear you right. If if you have a say it this way a strong mother company or something elsewhere where that business model works and you're going to the next country, I think it's something that we would be interested in to learn more about. Okay, well, well, the the, the only the, the, the problem being that is the the previous business was disrupted by COVID, oh, okay. so the pandemic. So. That, that's that's the problem that we have but it is but we the technology is proven and operates in Nigeria already we do, we're trying to set up this uh, impact business where we where we actually install uh, palm oil processing mills that are that the proven to work and uh, have been designed especially for the West African market and um, making uh, share the, 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 the smallholders, we're operating with smallholders, making them stakeholders in the business. And, um, you know, obviously with all ESG um, uh, uh, goals at the core of the business. And so we tick all the boxes, but the problem will be um, satisfying you with, you know, th the previous accounts. Yeah, you, and and I also see this as an issue that 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 uh, from what you say it may sound as if you would need to have some some uh, equity funding or whatever first before you come to the CFC. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but do do not. Uh, yeah, keep us in mind though. I mean, we we are aware of these cases. Yeah, we 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 uh, took a look in in um, these kind of business models also with with oil palm in West Africa. In principle, yeah. we are very interested in that. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So I'm afraid uh, this is all the questions that uh, that we can afford at this time because we need to move to another meeting. Uh, so I have a few in the chat box who are uh, NGOs or schools. Again, uh, any organization in principle is eligible to apply, but an organization needs to be able to sign the legal document, receive recoverable, that is returnable, that is loan financing from the CFC. The CFC would not in, in, in uh, would, would not be able to give grants other than to UN international organizations, uh, which is completely not the subject of this meeting. So for the purposes of individual enterprises, the CFC would not be able to give grants. Uh, multinational traders can apply. Um, uh, application by 15 September, if you miss it, then the next possible round has been answered. Again, uh, please uh, not hesitate to send any questions to the address of the CFC, open call at commonfund.org. Also the proposals for collaboration, uh, this address at the bottom of the page, it is attended to, so we will respond to all questions that we receive on this address. I, I apologize that because of the time constraints, we're not able to take all the questions from the floor at this stage. We will share the presentation to all people who registered for the meeting. Uh, and uh, if, uh, yes, once again, if you have any questions, then please uh, email us and uh, somebody will reply to the specific question. Uh, with that, I uh, thank you. Uh, and I would like to wish you a very nice day. Thank you all. Uh, this uh, concludes uh, this concludes the webinar. Uh, please uh, feel free to uh, connect.
uh, I did one thing. I did notice that two people in the webinar wanted to chat with each other. So I opened a breakout room. If you indeed would like to chat to, to each other, please uh, go into uh, use the breakout room function meeting and join the breakout room. Uh, the recording can now stop. Thank you very much.